Commissioner of Fire Law Profit with Springfield Daily Law Council for this second session on the traditional Latin Mass and a liturgical year. Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So this is a continuation from the first class about this, where we spoke about the classification of feasts in the TLM. Um, class one feast, class two feast, class three feast, and class four feast compared to the ranking of days in the liturgical year of the Novus Ordo, which would be Solemnity, Feast, Memorial, and Burial Day. Um, something I noticed when I was researching the the first and class feast of the TLM compared to the Novus Ordo, that the readings are very similar, the scripture readings. Now, of course, in the Novus Ordo, we have a three-year cycle, A, B, and C. In the year A, we hear the Gospel of Matthew. In the year B, we hear the Gospel of Mark. And in the year C, we hear the Gospel of Luke. And John is, um, interspersed throughout the year as well and in the Easter season. And uh, let's see, the first reading is most often from the New Testament in ordinary time, but not always. And during the Easter season, the first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. Um, and then we, of course, have the Psalm between the first and second reading. And the second reading often comes from St. Paul or the New Testament. Um, in the TLM, there is a, uh, an epistle, which comes usually from the New Testament, although I have found um, an occasion where it came from the book of Isaiah. And then it's followed with a psalm that's called a gradual in the TLM. Now the gradual is not a responsorial psalm like we sing in the Novus Ordo, but a gradual is a long, beautiful chant that um, it's through composed, which means the music continuously changes. It doesn't repeat, it just keeps on going as one continuous long chant. And then after that chant, of course, we have the Alleluia, and then we hear the gospel. And in the TLM throughout the year, um, the gospel is from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's just, um, and there's a lot of John throughout the year the liturgical year, the liturgical calendar of the TLM with the Gospel of John as well. So when it comes to the um, major feasts, the first class feast and the second class feast, when um, of course the major feasts in the TLM are is it the same as the major feasts in the Novus Ordo, which would make sense. Christmas, Easter, All Saints Day, the Assumption, the Annunciation of Mary, um, uh, the Solemnity of St. Joseph, the Solemnity of St. Peter and Paul, um, the Immaculate Conception on December 8th, the end of the octave of Christmas on January 1st, and all those beautiful days that we have as first class feasts in the TLM and solemnities in the Novus Ordo are all the same. The readings are um, similar. Now, in the TLM, there's an epistle and a gospel and a psalm. And as I compare the readings of the Novus Ordo to the readings of the TLM on these days, what I find is there's a lot of similarities, but they're not completely the same. And sometimes when there's an ABC year with a particular holy day, um, the gospel of the TLM for that particular day will appear in one of the three years. A, B, or C, meaning that on one of those three years, every three years, the gospel for the TLM would be the same as the gospel for the Novus Ordo. And the other two years, it would be different. So uh, I'll give you an example of that, starting with All Saints Day. So on All Saints Day, the first lesson or the epistle comes from the Apocalypse or the Book of Revelation, and it's the exact same as the first reading on All Saints Day in the Novus Ordo. I really like it when it lines up. I think it's awesome. Now, the gradual, which um, is the psalm between the readings, is Psalm 34 for 
the TLM. On All Saints Day, it's Psalm 24, so that is different. The Gospel is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Um, which is the exact same as it is for the Novus Ordo, the Beatitudes. Um, so that's really awesome because uh, it all lines up. So the integrity of those two days is, is, um, is right on the money. Um, and interestingly enough, the communion antiphon is from the Gospel of Matthew as well. Okay. So I found that to be true for all the major holy days. And um, it's in cases where there was uh, only one gospel option on a solemnity, it was the same gospel as the TLM. So we're closely aligned with all those days. And on the second class feast, it's similar too, but it's very close on in first class feast. Okay, now I wanna talk about the liturgical year. So I compared, I went through all the Sundays of the liturgical year and was just sn snooping around, so to speak. And starting with the first Sunday of Advent, what I noticed is the Psalm of Advent, uh, the first Sunday of Advent in the TLM is Psalm 25. And Psalm 25 is the Psalm on the first Sunday of Advent, year C. So it lined up very, very nicely that way for the first Sunday. And the gospel, I'm looking here, um, the epistle does not line up, the Psalm does, and the gospel is not similar. The gospel is not found anywhere in the three gospels on the first Sunday of Advent. So the only similarity I really found on that day was for the gradual. Okay, and then on the other Sundays of Advent, it did not seem, let's go to the second Sunday just to be sure here. Uh, I gotta find it, first Sunday, okay. Second Sunday of Advent was unavailable on this sheet for some reason, on this website for some reason. Let me go to the third Sunday. Third Sunday of Advent, which is Gaudete Sunday traditionally, a Sunday where the celebrant wears rose vestments and we celebrate being more than halfway through Advent. It's later Advent and um, it's a joyful Sunday, a Sunday of joy. Um, Advent, as you know, is a penitential season. It's not um, quite as penitential as Lent, but it is a penitential season preparing for the great, um, the great solemnity of Christmas or the nativity of our Lord. So um, on, on this third Sunday of Advent, the gradual is Psalm 80. Oh, this is really cool. This is cool. I really like it, like I say, when, when there's a lot of similarity. I wish there were more similarities, but I think it's really excited when, exciting when they do line up. So um, the antiphon for, this is interesting, the antiphon for the third Sunday of Advent is rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice, and that's where we get the name Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete in Domine, rejoice in the Lord. So that's where it comes from. And also, interestingly enough, the, um, the epistle for that day is from Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Brethren, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So see how that is just right in line with um, the antiphon. It's beautiful that it lines up so well. I'm looking here. So in on third, oh, okay, we're in the fourth Sunday. No, third Sunday, I apologize. Okay, hang on. So on the third Sunday of Advent, um, we do hear in the first readings of the first Sunday of Advent, we hear from the, the book of Isaiah on a, in A, B, and, and C is Zephaniah. But in, on third Sunday, year B, in the Novus Ordo, 
The second reading is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and it says, Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. So we hear that theme, but this text of the epistle does not appear. Um, Psalm 80 appears as a psalm as the responsorial, I'm sorry, Psalm 80 appears as the gradual, but none of the responsorial psalms for A, B, and C on the third Sunday use that text. Although Psalm 80 does appear on the first Sunday of Advent, so you see it earlier in the season because it is one of the Advent psalms. By the way, um, Psalm 25 that I was mentioning on the first Sunday of Advent is also a seasonal psalm of Advent, as is Psalm 80. Um, the gospel, the gospel is not the same. The gospel is from John, but it's not the same as A, B, or C. Okay, so then going to the fourth Sunday of, Sun of Advent, which is called Rorate Sunday, um, the introit is drop down do ye heavens from above and let the clouds rain the just one rorate cheli so that's called rorate sunday um, a lot of times there's masses rorate masses for this sunday and they have lots and lots and lots of candles lit a symbol of light so the epistle um, is is different that's not found on the fourth sunday of advent in any of the readings and I'm just double checking here. Yes, right. And the gradual is Psalm 145 and A, B, and C, it's Psalm 24, Psalm 89, and Psalm 80 again. So um, it doesn't line up with the fourth Sunday, but Psalm 80 appears in the TLM on the third Sunday of Advent. So they don't really line up all that well a little bit but, but not all that well then of course at Christmas um, everything starts to um, have a lot of similarity as far as the scripture in the um, TLM and the Novus Ordo then moving on to the Epiphany which in the TLM is celebrated on January 6 before Holy Family Sunday and in the Novus Ordo, it's celebrated after Holy Family Sunday on the Sunday. So for the Epiphany, um, the, the first lesson, as it is called, um, or the Epistle, is Isaiah, which is a little bit unusual, and that is the same as the Novus Ordo. Yay, I like that. The gradual is also Isaiah 60, but in the Novus Ordo, it's Psalm 72, um, which is, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, which is, of course, beautiful too. The gospel is the same. So that's what I'm talking about as far as uh, the integrity of the readings from the Novus Ordo for the major solemnities um, is, is it's, it's right on with the, with the TLM for the most part. Okay, um, then after the Epiphany, we have Sundays after the Epiphany. It's how they're numbered in the TLM. In the Novus Ordo, as you know, when we get through the Baptism of the Lord, which the Baptism of the Lord is on a Sunday, and that's the final Sunday of Christmas in the Novus Ordo, and actually it kind of, um, it works back and forth because it's, um, it's, it's also the first Sunday in ordinary time, counted that way as well. But after the baptism of the Lord, we count back in ordinary time, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth Sunday in ordinary time, until the final Sunday before Lent begins. Well, in the TLM, after the Epiphany, well, I'm sorry, after Holy Family Sunday, um, here it has the commemoration of the baptism of the Lord on a Monday. So don't think the baptism of the Lord occurs on a Sunday. It occurs on a Monday and or the day after Holy Family Sunday, I suppose. I don't know. I'll have to check on that. But it does not look like it appears on a Sunday. So after Holy Family Sunday, then 
it starts to move into the numbering of Sundays after the Epiphany. So we have the second Sunday after the Epiphany, the third Sunday, the fourth Sunday, and the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. And then we get into, I'm sorry, here, fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Okay, let me look here again. Okay, fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Then we get into the three Sundays before Lent, which are very interesting. And this is very different than the Novus Ordo. So the three Sundays in Lent are called Septuagesima Sunday, and then we have Sexagesima Sunday, and then we have Quinquagesima Sunday, otherwise known as Shrove Sunday, the last Sunday before Lent begins. Now here's the interesting thing about this. So Sexagema Sunday anticipates the season of Lent, but in effect, it really is almost just like Lent. It's considered a class two feast, um, second class feast, and the colors change to purple, the vestments change to purple, the Gloria is not sung, the Alleluia is no longer sung. Instead of the gradual, I'm sorry, instead of the Alleluia, the tract is sung. That's the alternative to the Alleluia during the season of Lent. It's called the tract. And so all these things change and some people who attend mass in that tradition begin their Lenten fasts, abstinence, and prayers on that day, Sexagesima Sunday. So it's actually three Sundays before first Sunday of Lent, which is very interesting. Now, Ash Wednesday in the TLM, the traditional Latin Mass, um, it has a lot of additional prayers here. It has the blessing of the ashes, and then it has, gosh, I'm seeing at least four prayers here that are said with the blessing of the ashes. And then for the gradual, I'm sorry for, this is weird because it's kind of out of order. Let me find, hang on, I have to find where the epistle is. It's in booklet form, but it's a little tricky to find. Okay, um, the epistle, oh, where's the epistle? Hang on, don't go away. Well, I'll talk about the gradual in the meanwhile. So the gradual or the psalm during the TLM for Ash Wednesday is Psalm 57. But in the, um, in the Novus Ordo on Ash Wednesday, we hear Psalm 51, the great Psalm of David, um, the great penitential Psalm of David. And we sing the refrain, be merciful to me, O Lord, be merciful. Be merciful, O Lord, for I have sinned. I'm sorry, um, end of the day. Be merciful, O Lord, for I have sinned. I have to sing it to uh, get, it my, get it right in my, get the text right in my mouth here. Um, the gospel is the gospel of Matthew for Ash Wednesday, and it's the same gospel as we hear every Ash Wednesday. Um, and it's the gospel about fasting and washing your face and, and um, your father sees what you do in secret, don't go out and um, shout to the world that you're fasting. So that beautiful gospel that we hear every Ash Wednesday is the same as the TLM. So that's pretty neato. Okay, so now let's go to the first Sunday of Lent. Okay, the first Sunday of Lent, um, the introit is based on Psalm 91. Um, and the communion antiphon is based on Psalm 91. And the offertory antiphon is based on Psalm 91, which brings, and the gradual is Psalm 91. And Psalm 91 is one of the options um, for the first Sunday of Lent. I have to go back and tell you which year. Um, it's not year A, I know, because year A, the first Sunday of Lent is Psalm 51 again. Um, but Psalm 91 is, I think it's year B. Hang on, I'm at Easter Vigil. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Ash Wednesday, first Sunday of Lent. 
Okay. Oh, okay. It's year C. Year C. Year C on the first Sunday of Lent is Psalm 91. So, and the tract is also based on Psalm 91. So everything about the first Sunday of Lent is, boy, it's Psalm 91 rich. Which brings me to another point that um, the traditional Latin mass is very psalm rich. Uh, the introit is often psalm based and has psalm verses paired with it. Of course, we have the gradual, which is psalm. We have um, psalms attached to the Alleluia and the tract. We have offertory antiphons with psalms or based on psalms, and we have communion antiphons that are based on psalms or have psalms attached to them. So it's just rich, rich, rich with psalmody. Of course, we have that same option in the Novus Ordo, but it's not always used. Here at the parish, we do sing the entrance antiphon and we sing the communion antiphon often with psalm verses because it's, um, um, it has a lot of integrity with singing the mass because that's the text the church gives us. Um, but we don't normally sing the offertory antiphon, although we could. And the entrance antiphon can be sung with psalm verses too. We just don't often see that in masses in Novus Ordo. But the possibility is there, the music is available and there if people do choose to do that. Okay, the second Sunday of Lent is the Sunday of the story of the Transfiguration, the Gospel story of the Transfiguration. And um, the, the gospel lines up beautifully from year A, the gospel of Matthew, the story of the transfiguration. However, the um, psalm is not the same. So in, on the second Sunday of Lent, now this is really curious, but on the second Sunday of Lent, the gradual is Psalm 25. I noticed that on the first Sunday of Lent in year B, the psalm was was Psalm 25. But on um, the second Sunday of Lent in Novus Ordo, we have Psalm 33, we have Psalm 116, and we have Psalm 27. So the gradual does not really line up, um, but the gospel does. And the epistle um, is not from, it's not seen in the uh, Novus Ordo. So the gospel is nice and tidy. Okay, let's see, I have to get back to that page. Hang on a second here. Okay, so now um, what I noticed was the rest of Lent, it, um, the readings, the scripture readings don't particularly line up with the Novus Ordo and the TLM. I did a quick browsing through, but it didn't seem to, um, have a lot in common. I didn't see the carryover with the gradual, the epistle, or the gospel on the third, fourth, fifth Sundays of Lent. Of course, when we get to Palm Sunday, um, or Passion Sunday, it's interesting because it's called Passion Sunday in the TLM, but the Passion is read on Palm Sunday in the TLM. And as I mentioned before, Passion Sunday and Palm Sunday are two separate Sundays in the traditional Latin Mass. Um, Passion Sunday preceding Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday is followed by Passion Tide for the burial days of that week and Palm Sunday is followed by um, Holy Week. Okay, so Passion Sunday, um, the, God, the, the gradual is Psalm 143. And so in the Novus Ordo, that would be the fifth Sunday of Lent. And um, on the fifth Sunday of Lent, we hear Psalm 130, and we hear Psalm 51 again, and we hear Psalm 126. So uh, the gradual and the responsorial Psalm in A, B, and C in the Novus Ordo are very, very different. Um, let's see. And the gospel, the gospel is from John, and it is not, it is not any of the three gospels in A, B, and C. So it's pretty different. Palm Sunday, of course, um, has 
as more similarity. Um, the Palm Sunday liturgy is um, much more elaborate and involved. In fact, all the liturgies of Holy Week, um, Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday, um, Sacred Triduum, those three days, uh, all those liturgies are much more involved and much more elaborate. There's more texts, more prayers, more singing. Uh, it's, it's much simpler in the Novus Ordo. And even though we consider those liturgies very long, um, it's longer yet in the uh, TLM. So in the Novus Ordo, for the responsorial psalm, we hear Psalm 22, and we hear the refrain, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the, um, in the TLM, the psalm or the gradual is Psalm 73. Now, here is where it is similar. However, the tract does include Psalm 22. So that's nice. That's pretty cool because it's, it's the same. Um, and the first reading is that beautiful reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, um, that at every name, every name of Jesus, uh, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That beautiful reading that we just heard recently, um, I think it last two weekends ago, we heard that at Mass. And the Gospel of Matthew is the same reading of the Passion that we hear on Palm Sunday in year A. So there is a lot of similarity there. Again, with the major feasts, that seems to really be so. Have a lot of integrity um, in the Novus Ordo as far as the first class feasts. Then uh, after Easter, the first Sunday of after Easter is called Divine Mercy Sunday or Low Sunday. And um, of course, that's a newer name for that Sunday that was given to us by Sister Faustina and Pope John Paul II. Um, and that is the story of Doubting Thomas from the Gospel of John, and that is the same in the Novus Ordo. Very cool. So now here's a very interesting thing that's also different. Um, instead of the gradual or the psalm after the epistle before the Gospel, during the Easter season it's an Alleluia and there's verses sung here. For example, on this particular day it's Alleluia, Alleluia, and these Alleluias are very elaborate and different every week. On the day of my resurrection, says the Lord, I will go before you into Galilee, coming from the Gospel, Alleluia. And this is from the Gospel of John. After eight days, the doors being shut, Jesus stood in the midst of, the, of his disciples and said, Peace be to you, Alleluia. Excuse me. So, in the Novus Ordo, there always is the option during the Easter season, instead of singing the psalm refrain, this text of the psalm refrain, we can always sing Alleluia and psalm verses. And so that comes directly from the TLM, which is pretty, pretty darn cool. Okay, so what I found was the rest of the Sundays of Easter are pretty different. The readings um, don't line up with the same Sundays in Easter in the Novus Ordo. Now this is interesting. What would be the our third Sunday in Easter is called um, Good Shepherd Sunday in the, the TLM. And in the Novus Ordo, Good Shepherd Sunday comes on the fourth Sunday of Easter. So in comparing those two Sundays, Good Shepherd Sunday, um, the Epistle, I don't know, I don't think the epistle comes from any of the days of the fourth Sunday of Easter, but let me look real quick here. Okay, no, 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 they all, of course not. They all come from Acts, yes, I knew that. So no, the epistle um, from the TLM comes from 1 Peter, so that's not the same. And then we have the Alleluia, yet a different melody, a different elaborate melody for the Alleluia. And then the gospel is the same as year B. So uh, this would be the third Sunday of Easter, the TLM called Good Shepherd Sunday. That would be our fourth Sunday, 
of Easter in year B, the Gospel of the same, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 16. So um, I found that interesting. So then we move on, of course, and Pentecost um, is just a wonderful day. Um, Pentecost is the third um, biggest solemnity in our church here. The third, I should say, the third greatest solemnity in our, our church here, our church calendar. Uh, the highest solemnity being Easter, Easter Vigil, Easter, all the celebrations of Easter, then Christmas, and then Pentecost, the birth of the church. And on Pentecost, I've got to find it here. Hang on. Oh, I should talk about Ascension too. Um, okay, let me go to Pentecost first since I was there. So on Pentecost, um, the first lesson is the same as Pentecost Sunday, which is, again, very, very nice that it's um, so similar. We're all praying together, hearing the same readings on that beautiful day. Um, so then we look at the psalm. Now this is interesting because of course we have, since Pentecost is the last day of Easter, we still have the Allelu Alleluia instead of the gradual. And the Alleluia has psalm verses of guess what? Psalm 104. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth, which is the psalm for Pentecost in the Novus Ordo. Very cool. And of course, then we've got the beautiful Pentecost sequence, Veni Sancte Spiritus, that's sung before the gospel. And, um, and we have that as well in the Novus Ordo, which is wonderful. And we have the same gospel on Pentecost from the Gospel of John. And that would be in year, let's see, the exact same gospel. Well, it's a little bit different verses, but similar close in year C. In year C, it's the same. So A and B, it's the Gospel of John, but it's different sections of the Gospel of John. So every three years, we have the same reading as the TLM on that day. Okay, so now moving back. Let's back up to Ascension briefly. So Ascension, um, the Gospel is the same for year B in Mark. Hang on, I have to go back here too. I'm just back and forth all over the place. Okay, so yes, the gospel is the same in year B on the Ascension. On the Ascension in the Novus Ordo, we have the options of A, B, and C, and um, the gospel is from Mark in the TLM. So every three years we have this hear the same gospel on that day. And Every year we hear the same first reading um, in the Novus Ordo as we as the first lesson or the um, or the lesson in the TLM. The Epistle in the TLM is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter one, verses one through eleven. So that is the same. And then this is pretty cool. This is lining up great. The Alleluia between the epistle and the gospel has psalm verses of Psalm 47, which is the same psalm that we hear on the ascension. Psalm 47, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord is the refrain that we sing. So that really matches up well. And then the offertory antiphon is based on Psalm 47 as well. Okay. Then, um, bear with me here, I know this is long, but it's kind of, I'm having fun, I hope you are. Okay, like I say, I'm a bit of a liturgical geek, but I think this is pretty cool. Okay, so then on Trinity Sunday, which is the Sunday after, um, after Pentecost, and it's no longer the Easter season, but it's still a solemnity. Um, the epistle is from Romans, and I don't think we find that we don't find that in any of the options for, for Trinity Sunday. We hear from Exodus, Proverbs, and Deuteronomy. And the gradual, now this is the same as year A, the gradual is from Daniel, um, your blessed Lord God of our fathers, to you glory and praise forevermore. 
and that similar text um, is used for the responsorial psalm in the Novus Ordo in year A. And the gospel is the same as year A, Matthew. Um, not quite the same verses, a little bit shorter actually in the TLM, but it's the same as year A. So every three years on the Ascension, we hear the same psalm and we hear the same gospel. Okay, on Trinity Sunday. Okay, now moving ahead to, I keep losing my place here. Um, before we get back to the Sundays after Pentecost, we have one more Sunday and that's uh, actually one more Sunday in the Novus Ordo, that's Corpus Christi. And Corpus Christi in the TLM comes on a Thursday. Like the Ascension, by the way, we celebrate on a Sunday, which used to be the seventh Sunday of Easter earlier in my years as a liturgical musician, and then it was changed to Sunday. Um, Corpus Christi used to be on a Thursday and is still on a Thursday in the traditional Latin Mass. So let's look at that once. By the way, um, the sequences, many of the sequences were suspended. Sequences are, um, it's our poems of prose and poetry that were written um, um, about a feast day, about a feast day, and kind of describing the feast day, giving, elaborating on feast day, more beautiful verses about whatever uh, the feast day was celebrating. So in this case, Lauda Zion means praise Zion. We celebrate the body and blood of Christ on Corpus Christi. And the sequence is about the body and blood of Christ. I'll read you just a little bit of the poetry. It's um, not a required sequence, it's an optional sequence, and it's very, very long, beautiful, but very, very long. I've never had the courage to do it here at the parish because I just didn't wanna push my luck with that long a sequence, especially after having a sequence two weeks before in Pentecost. Maybe one day I'll get brave, but it's a long, beautiful prayer, um, and I'll just read a little bit of it here, if I can find the beginning of the beginning of the sequence. It can be read, but it's always preferable to sing it. So it's um, praise thy savior, O Zion, praise thy guide and shepherd in hymns and canticles. As much as thou hast power, so also dare, for he is above all praise, nor can thou praise him enough. So it's a, a long, beautiful song of praise, and it, but it does talk about the bread of angels and it talks about the flesh and blood of Jesus. Um, so it has, gosh, I don't know how many verses, 14, 16 verses, it's long, but, uh, but beautiful. So on Cor Corpus Christi, the gradual is Psalm 145, and in year A, B, and C, we have Psalm 147, Psalm 116, and Psalm 110. So that is not the same. The, um, this is all out of order here, so let me find. The gospel is according to John, chapter six, verses 69, 56 through 59. Yes, okay, so it's a shorter version. Actually, this is interesting. In year A, it's the gospel um, according to John, but it's a little bit longer version, but it's that same portion of the gospel. So. That lines up nicely. On year A, every three years, we pray the same gospel on Corpus Christi. Um, the epistle, I don't think, the epistle in um, the Novus Ordo, A, B, and C is Deuteronomy, Exodus, and Genesis. And here the epistle is St. Paul to the Corinthians. So that doesn't, that doesn't exactly line up. But the, um, the sequence and the gospel do so. Then at this point um, in the Novus Ordo after Corpus Christi, of course, we're back into ordinary time, the Monday after Pentecost, but we still have two solemnities after Pentecost. We have Holy Trinity Sunday and Corpus Christi or the body and blood of Christ. Um, but then the Sundays after that are numbered in ordinary time. We pick up um, uh, 
from the last Sunday of the liturgical year before Advent, that's the 34th Sunday, and then we back up to wherever that lines up after um, Corpus Christi. So it might be the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, we actually don't ever experience all the Sundays in Ordinary Time. We miss some along the way. I mean, some of them come up rarely because of the date of Easter. A couple years ago, we had the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, I think it might have been year C, and it was the first time we heard those readings in a long time because um, of the way Easter falls. So uh, in the traditional Latin Mass, these are numbered as Sundays after Pentecost. So for example, um, um, even though it's really not directly after Pentecost, it's called the second Sunday after Pentecost, which would be three weeks after Pentecost. And then the third Sunday after Pentecost, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and it goes on up to the, the last Sunday of the liturgical year, which is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, so at this point, the Sundays, um, the readings don't line up. They're very different. Um, so if you were to go to Mass on a Sunday in Ordinary Time, uh, say you were going to Mass on the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, um, obviously at um, a Novus Ordo Church, and then you decided you wanted to go to Mass on that same day in the TLM, wherever they fall, whatever Sunday after Pentecost it would be, the readings would be completely different. The propers would be completely different. So it's really, um, the masses aren't similar at all in contact for those Sundays in ordinary time. Um, now, something interesting, the last Sunday of our liturgical year in the Novus Ordo is um, um, Christ the King, our Lord and Savior of the universe. And that solemnity um, was initiated by one of our popes, I can't remember which pope, but one of our popes initiated it early in the 20th century. And it, um, it was um, celebrated, of course, first in the TLM early in the 20th century before Vatican II. And it was celebrated on the last Sunday in October. Um, so we're, let's compare that, look at that. So I gotta go to the end of October here. And it's called the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. The names changed a lot over the years. So the um, the epistle is not the similar, and the psalm is not similar, because on the last Sunday of the liturgical year, feast of Christ the King, which is a solemnity, the options for A, B, and C are Psalm twenty three. Psalm 93 and Psalm 122, which comes up a few different times during, Psalm 122 comes up a few different times during um, the liturgical year in the Novus Ordo and the um, liturgical calendar of the TLM. This gradual for this feast is Psalm 72, same as the Epiphany, ironically enough, and the um, gospel, let's see, where is the gospel? It's really hard to find in this sheet. Oh, it's the Gospel of John. Um, I don't think it's the same as any of the A, B, and C, but let me just double check. Okay. John does come up one. Oh, yes, I, I take that back. I am so sorry. So for year A, it is the same gospel. It is the same gospel. Gospel of John, chapter 18. So every three years, on the solemnity of Christ the King, our Lord and Savior of the universe, or I, I forget, oh, it's called our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, I'm sorry. I can't keep the name straight because they keep changing them. But um, every three years, we have the same gospel as the TLM. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of differences between the Mass at the TLM and the Mass in the Novus Ordo. Similarities, lots of similarities, especially in the first and second class feast. Uh, as far as ordinary time, 
and even the seasons of Advent and Lent, there's a lot of differences and the seasons of Easter. Um, the, this book, The Gradually Romanum, I referred to before, was um, put together in 1974, and it contains the introits and communios, or the entrance antiphon and communion antiphons, the original chant notation for those antiphons, Gregorian antiphons in Latin, um, that are used throughout the liturgical calendar of the TLM. And those antiphons had been assigned to various days in the church year. Now the antiphons would be the same again for the first class feasts and probably the same for most of the second class feasts, although I can't say 100% for certain about that. But during ordinary time, um, we have a lot of these antiphons assigned to us for different Sundays in ordinary time. So we get to share a lot of that great repertoire, of course. And the antiphons, the entrance antiphons and community antiphons are the same A, B, year A, B, and C. They, they don't change like the readings do. The antiphons always remain the same. So um, we have that similarity on first and second class feast as well. So thank you for walking through this with me. I apologize. I'm looking at the clock here and it's 46 minutes. I hope I can even save this video. God bless you and um, um, pray always.